Hi, everyone. This is Tom Broussard. Nice to see everyone. Um, this is a new set of, of series. These are going to be uh, articles about the science and the scientists of stroke, uh, aphasia, recovery, plasticity. Um, and um, I think I was going to do about 18 of these chapters, 18 of these articles. It might be even longer <laughs> um, because as I go through each of these scientists, I find three other scientists that are all connected to each other. Um, so I'll see how far I can go. Uh, I'll probably also try to speed it up a little bit. So instead of, you know, 12 to 14 a year, if I can make it to 20 or 24, um, that'd be twice a month, um, have other kinds of articles too. But the science and scientists are amazing to me. Um, and the first one is uh, is Hildred Schul. Um, and uh, she is the one, and I have her books here and read her books and her articles, um, but she is the one who really started talking about stimulation um, as the name of the game when it comes to aphasia recovery. And um, so I'll read about this a little bit. I have lots of quotes in the, uh, in the um, articles, um, but as I am learning more about her, about what their Dr. Schull was working on and finding other people who were, again, coming together, not only here, but around the world, really, at about the same time, I, I say early uh, 18, 1880s or so up until um, after World War II here in the United States. And in her case, um, she uh, was born, and I'll end up reading some of it, but she was born in South Bend, Indiana in 1906. She died young in 1970. She was a speech pathologist and a researcher and ended up getting a series of grants that went on for 15 years uh, just after her PhD in uh, the University of Idaho in 1946. Um, and she started working there in 1948 and was there for um, 15 years straight working on aphasia recovery. And at the very beginning, she didn't know much about aphasia. Um, she had just gotten her, her PhD um, and wanted to find uh, work uh, in that area and ended up doing these grants and working on it for 15 years. And one of the, uh, uh, one of the things that she did was writing her book, uh, really a, a great book that most people in the speech language people have read about called Aphasia in Adults, Diagnosis, Prognosis and Treatment uh, as a Result. And it was published in um, 1964. Um, but it is so interesting. Uh, she did it for such a long time. They ended up calling because she did her work with her book and then uh, started doing uh, aphasia tests. Um, she was doing that for such a long time that when it came to taking these various tests for people with aphasia, uh, they just called it, oh, get me a sure. Just get me one. Get me a sure. Um, apparently, other other hospitals, uh, they would just say, get me a Minnesota. Um, and that was the test. That's what they call the test. Um, but it's always so funny that they had done that. Um, but it is truly that the stimulation that Shul had uh, studied about and researched about and then started uh, explaining how that works uh, is the best approach. I say the best. Um, there are lots of other ways to approach this, but it has to also uh, approach recovery with, um, with stimulation. Um, it's so interesting because I've read it before when when it comes to people with stroke and aphasia in terms of 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 of, of stimulating the brain, the only thing you can do is getting into the brain, right? It, it has to get in there to start to um, make the changes that have to be done neurologically within the brain. Um, and as she said here, it would seem that similar Stimulation is the only method we have for making complex events happen in the brain. All the evidences suggest that auditory stimulation is crucial in control of language processes. Um, so 
basically saying nothing gets into the into the brain without some amount of stimular of stimulation of one kind or another, but mostly through auditorial stimulation. It's as a result, um, the one of the other things that it has to do when it's stimulated is the integration component of the brain. When I say integration, meaning if you have a switch and you switch it on, off, on, off, that's the most simplest integration you can have. You're just turning it on and it's now on. Um, when it comes to uh, integration, um, when the information gets into the brain, it isn't just at one po point or another, it's the in entire brain uh, doing what it has to do to integrate so many other uh, factors that leads you to some end result. So it doesn't happen that you have your your tests, uh, quizzes with your SLP, and somehow tomorrow you will, quote, be better. Um, what she is referring to here and several of her other colleagues that were all working on this at about the same time in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, um, that the, uh, as they say here, it is not only a language disorder, but it is also a disorder affecting the patient's total reaction pattern due to a disturbance of the integrating integrating capacity of the cortex of the brain. So that's what they're talking about. Um, the brain has this integrating capacity and that is what's damaged. It, 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 that's what's damaged. The, it isn't so much quote the language itself. It is this capacity to integrate all the incoming messages be able to integrate all of them and come out with an end result. Um, so it's more than just integration as if it is integrating the language. Uh, I say that's more because that's what Shul said and several others, Wedman is another one. Um, and as Shul said, as she says here, Shul believes that our language is not lost or destroyed, but swamped in noise and general chaos of processes whose mass action can no longer be properly coordinated. So that is what she is talking about, um, that it is not so much uh, a, 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 um, a theory of the lost view, meaning you've lost your language, as much as the, uh, the interference theory, meaning it just gets in the way. Uh, and that's the uh, uh, integration component that's 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 hurt, that is damaged, that it's so that it cannot do what it used to be able to do. And as they talk about it here, as Shul talks about it here, um, our language is, now I'm reading from this, um, our, our language is acquired and organized through a complex set of sensory systems that aid in the same language acquisition process of aphasia recovery. Um, the but the, this approach treats the patient as an active participant in the reorganization of language and adjust simulation to mac, maxim, maximize the ability of the patient to participate in the process. So that is what uh, Dr. Shul was working on. Um, a lot of speech language pathology talk about stimulation as, as a great way to make this happen because we have to if, if you cannot read write or speak well you you have to read write or speak badly um, to provide the stimulation that is needed um, that's why we have our groups that's why we have our quizzes all our tests uh, that provides the stimulation but it is more than just that stimulation that somehow tomorrow quote your language will get better as much as the entire i say the whole body, the whole body, but the whole brain uh, is now beginning to um, uh, change the way uh, the brain uh, takes in that information, integrates it. The more you do of that, the more you do of that. So the more you do the stimulation, the more the uh, reorganization occurs uh, and the more integration occurs along the way as a result of the, of the uh, uh, stimulation. The, um, here's another quote. 
it's not in the article, but it's on the, if you read the uh, full article, you see it on the, on the uh, side here. Um, another one of the people with whom she had been working talks here. Reorganization alters behavior, but does not provide specific behavior. It changes the parameters of behavior, not the content. So, uh, and here's one more quote here, or reorganization of the organism, not representation of the stimulus is the major goal of a stimulation approach. So you really are reorganizing um, that alters behavior, but not that I'll now be able to speak better tomorrow than today, as much as you are changing the parameters of behavior such that um, you'll be able to then express a new thing today that you couldn't express necessary, but not necessarily the exact same words again uh, going forward. So it's very interesting. Sometimes it can be complicated. Uh, you have to read Shul's work and then continue to read other colleagues of Shul's um, that allows you to see it from various perspectives as they are all trying to figure this out uh, going forward. So um, so that is the first chapter, as it were, with the science and scientists, and it is called Aphasia Recovery, Hildred Schule, and Schule's Simulation Approach to Rehabilitation. And that will be the first group. Um, uh, she was also became an ASHA fellow and received the honors of ASHA uh, posthumously nine months after she died of cancer. I have pictures in the article, pictures of Dr. Shule, as well as a picture of her gravestone um, as well. So you get a better idea and quite a few of her colleagues um, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s are all listed here as with various uh, citations and um, uh, quotes of each each one of these. Um, but as each, each of them went forward, they all ended up talking, as did Shul, that this all has to do with the individual themselves. And as she said, treating aphasic sumdex is relationship therapy from beginning to end. So it's all about uh, why we also have have our group um, activities because it really does refer to each one of us beginning to understand how we had done what we'd done before our stroke, had the motivation to now take what we knew before, using that to go forward um, with all of the activities, all of the stimulation that will eventually help us, quote, get better. Again, not because of one word or another, as much as reorganizing the, the uh, 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 integration or reintegration process going forward in the same way we had done it before, because it takes a long time to build up that integrating capacity. Uh, and that is what's damaged because it's been so um, disturbed as it were. So we have to keep working on that. Anyway, that's the first scientist. I'm looking forward to all of these coming forward. Um, I know who I'm doing next, so I'll be working on that uh, and looking forward to having people uh, send me emails and let me know more about uh, Shul as well as others going forward. The next, uh, the next uh, uh, article will be a person named Wetman um, and uh, a colleague of, of uh, Shul's as well. Have a good day, and I will look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.